From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Enough with the Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is D giving you an update. As you can see, the tank is kind of cloudy. I just did some cleaning, stirring up of the sand. And in another video, I'm going to tell you of a near miss that I almost had shake up with the tank. But I'll get into that later. What I'm going to go into today is, as you know, this tank is running a long time. It's primarily softies and coils that I like, fast growers and things of that nature. But one of the reasons for having the frag tank as a grow out as uh, this is a high nutrient system. The downstairs frag tank is a low nutrient system and I'm gonna talk about one of the pieces I'm gonna move from the frag tank into the main tank. So let's take a look at it. All right, well, here we are downstairs at the frag tank and I'm gonna talk about one of the pieces I'm going to move. Now, this system is a really lower nutrient system. It's smaller, I do a lot more water changes on it. And being that it's smaller, it's really compact, densely growing. This was really meant to be a grow out tank. So uh, that's one thing to consider when you put species like Xenia or Kenya, which are very fast growers. They utilize a lot of nutrients. So all of my uh, slower growers or more LPS and SPS pieces are are getting really quickly crowded. So I'm going to get to the piece that I'm going to move upstairs. And that is the Pavona. As you can see, this piece is really big. And I have another piece, which is down here. I'm going to move that to the main tank. It's hard to see, but it's a really nice piece. And seeing how it's getting crowded, I'm gonna end up probably cutting a lot of the Kenya. But for the most part, it's really getting shaded and it's growing towards the light, which is causing it to get that cabbage effect. As you can see a lot of growth on the tips and it's curling up, so I thought, Okay, this is the time to move it. Win, lose, or draw. We're going to see how it's going to do in the main tank, which is a really higher nutrient system. Um, these, these pieces down here grow really fast because it's such a smaller closed system that uh, the growth rate in the main tank will be probably quite different. As you can see, these corals take on a different color, a different hue, and it's easier to dose the smaller tank. I probably use one right now. I'm using one mil of two part in this tank, which is really accelerating growth. So let's get this boy cupped up. I'm not I'm going to try not to take it out of the water completely. I'm going to use my cups that I use there to collect the piece. So let me get this tripod up so you can first and foremost something that we really never do is put on gloves i'm guilty of it so i'm not going to act like i'm the all-knowing eye i definitely do a lot of things without gloves i should know better we all know better but yeah we do it but it's always good when dealing with the corals to wear gloves so i'm going to move the kenya out of the way and first get the piece out from under here it's really hard to get to and uh, try not to break it in the process. But this is a really big piece. As you can see, uh, it's really big. I got this as a little piece from this main one. It was literally one branch. You can see, I know it's hard to see. I uh, try to move the tripod without causing a whole big mess, but you can see where it grew completely around the plug. There's the plug. I started this from a little itty bitty tiny piece and it is completely encrusted. I hope it does good in the uh, tank upstairs, which is a completely different setup as far as nutrients and dosing. I'm gonna move this here, try not to break it. Always with the Pavonia, worry about breaking it. I hate to put it upside down, but it's the easiest way to move this guy. And let me get my top because I have plenty of tops for these. Is that the right top? No, it's not. Where's my top? Come on. Don't worry, I always have these senior moments with tanks. We always forget where the hell we move everything. But uh, there's my top here. Let me get out on my counter. Uh, one thing, if you guys want to build uh, stands and things like that, this is probably the best thing I ever built. This was an old bookcase. I cut the drawer out and I put these hinges on it. So I have a little work counter where I cut pieces and frags and all my stuff is down here. Top off and everything. So good beans. All right, let's cover that up and 
get it upstairs all right we're ready to go now cooking with gas Bavona, i hope you like your new home now the, since the chemistry is so different in this tank i am going to float it and acclimate it and do a little drip over the course of a few minutes you know to get the ph and everything on the same wavelength because the parameters in this tank since it is such a larger system and containing even corals like cabbage leather which tend to release certain to, uh, chemical uh, breakups into the water and as you can see I've irritated everything by cleaning the tank I want to give these guys a chance to get acclimated and I think I'm going to put it probably in this little area where this uh, dead branch that was bleached out so it makes the perfect spot to try to glue that pavona down i may or may not move it there. there's a lot of etage over there but it'll probably end up somewhere in this proximity because i want it in a high flow area either there or i may put it here but once again see these corals are closed when they open up they completely cover that area as you can see downstairs they can open up and cover a really wide area so uh bear with me i'm going to get gluing and screwing down and i will come back as soon as i'm all set okay everybody so as you can see i decided to place the pavona up a little bit higher a little bit west of the overflow box where i know it gets a lot of flow but it's not getting the direct flow and also i was thinking more about having it right under these leathers which can be pretty combative as far as coral placement because i know when this kenya opens it's huge but what i did do is i put a smaller piece of the pavona up here just to see how it does so there's a little piece of it wedged in here right by the wp40 which is really powerful i think it's set to about three or four right now yeah, it's set to two actually <laughs> so uh it won't be getting really really crazy flow it's set to two so i'll give it some time to adjust to the new tank but like i said we're going to see how these two do because the chemistry in this tank is way different than the chemistry downstairs not as many water changes and a lot more higher nutrients which is why aptasia tend to thrive in this tank where my uh, peppermint shrimp knock them off real fast in the tank downstairs so this is a beautiful piece it's starting to open up a little bit i did jostle it around quite a bit trying to wedge it into a little hole there hopefully my fish don't try to knock it down i put a substantial amount of uh gel glue in there so god willing <laughs> it holds this one you can see the glue in there it sets real good once that stuff hits the salt water and gets a little skin on it that white skin on it will be well hidden by the uh you know growth of algae and sediment and things of that nature as you can see there's tons of pieces in here you can't see any glue or anything so this one completely grew onto the rock i don't even remember this was a little branch so uh i like to uh keep them in place by that method so uh follow me keep tabs i will give you an update on how this does hopefully it doesn't kick off altogether and uh, i want to thank you guys for watching thank you for your support click the like button subscribe to the channel for further updates and this is it for today's sunday swim thank you everybody tank on see ya Fishies.